Hey, what's up you guys? I'm Bill from Good Old Days Gaming, and I'm here to give you a complete guide of the Champion's Ballad quest as part of the Champion's Ballad DLC in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I'm going to reveal to you all the locations of the puzzles concerning the four champions, how to solve those puzzles, and as also solve all 16 shrines. I will not show you how to beat the bosses because you probably already know how because you've done it in the main game. So first things first is the one hit obliterator trials. No matter how many hearts you have, it's going to take you down to a quarter heart and you will die in one hit. You have to carry this weapon and destroy all the enemies in four locations. It is a one hit kill though. Just be quick, be cautious. Maybe it'll take a few tries, but you'll get it eventually. And your first shrine in the forest is collected soul. Remember, this whole time you only have one hit and you're dead. Food does not help you out. So in this first section you have spike balls and boulders. Just be careful and work your way down the ramp to a scoop where you'll see a small orb, a big orb, and a treasure chest. The big orb is just to access another treasure chest. And really all you need is the small orb. I do not know what's in the treasure chest that you can scoop up because I just ignored it on my playthrough. So grab the small orb, bring it back up to the entrance, throw it in its little home, and there you go. Collect your orb and we'll move on. The next shrine after defeating the next wave of enemies is Stop to Start. In this one, the first room is a giant spike thing that kind of reminds me of that pop-up game. What is it? Perfection? Anyway, use Magnesis and climb across to get to the next room. You'll come across two cogs. You're going to need to use Stasis. I would recommend freezing the second cog and making your way across and then be really careful across those conveyors. You should be alright or you could wait for Stasis to recharge and freeze one of the conveyors. Next in the swinging ball section, just freeze the last one and make your way across pretty easily. And the last puzzle in this shrine is a death wall. <laughs> Good luck with it. It's kind of like Venom from Star Fox. Stuff just juts out at you. And in the very last section, climb over the one spike and get your orb. And then the next shrine in the Great Plateau is a major test of strength plus. It's just Guardians. You have a one-hit kill weapon, but remember you die in one hit. Use arrows. And the final shrine is Path of Light. This one is pretty easy. There's nothing to it, just look at your surroundings and basically walk to the end. There's no real challenge here. I mean, you could walk around in the middle, but just walk around the outside. There's no real challenge once again. The next puzzle is just timing. Wait for the fire to go away and walk over it. And then the final thing, there's three small guardians. One arrow should take them all out. And then walk your way up and get your orb. At this point, the obliterator breaks into four different orbs. Very Ocarina of Time-esque. These are your four champions. We'll start with Rivali. His first picture is Hebra Mountain, the highest peak. On the main map, go to the highest peak. You should have the Goma Asag Shrine. Zoom in and right on the lowest path, go ahead and put your pin. The next picture is this canyon. To find it, the easiest way is to start at Hebra Tower, go down into this big valley, zoom into Tanagar Canyon, you'll find this lower ridge of the mountain. You want to place your pin right about there. And the final picture for Rivali is just simply the flight range. It's already marked on your map for you as part of the main quest, but if you feel so inclined, you can put a pin there as well. In the flight range, you need to take down four targets with one stamina go. If you need help with the stamina, cook up something with enduring in the title, like an enduring elixir. This gives you your first shrine, the four wins. Simply hit the switch, ride up to the central chamber where there's a big rotating thing with four corners. Each corner has a puzzle and a switch. The first puzzle, simply use a bomb arrow or a bomb and destroy the bricks. Float inside, hit the switch, that's your first wind. The second one, shoot an arrow through one of the fences. Third, ride inside one of the corners and hit the switch. And fourth, there's going to be a propeller that is in, needs to be active in an updraft, hit the switch. For the next one, warp to the Goma Asag Shrine. You will need fire arrows or a campfire to melt the ice. Make a left and shield surf through all the rings that you see. Pretty simple. It kind of reminds me of the Yeti in Twilight Princess. Remember the guy who makes the pumpkin soup? I don't know, it just kind of reminded me of that. But anyway, at the bottom you get the Kia Toza Shrine, which is Master of the Orb. One of the cleverest, most clever shrines of the 16. Anyway, at the top you want to place a bomb under that cement block that you raise up with Cryonis. Use another Cryonis block to get on top of the cement one. Select, select your bomb, detonate it, and jump off. At the top you will find a falcon bow in the chest if you want it. Onto the main puzzle, get Magnesis. Use these walls 
and close them in to prevent the orb from falling off of the platform. Next, pretty obviously, you have to move the next metal platforms into a straight line to prevent the orb from falling off once again. Then jump down, get Cryonis, and right at the base of that platform on the left, you want to create two blocks to create a bridge. Jump back up, step on the switch to reverse the conveyor to allow the orb to continue down to the next chute. As soon as it lands on the next chute, jump down, get stasis, freeze this platform, run over to the switch and get ready to step on it at the exact moment. As soon as it hits that cement chute launcher thing, whatever it is, that's its official name, get over, collect your emblem, and there you go. Now for the Tanagar Canyon one, you want to warp to Heber Tower around 12 a.m., somewhere between 12 a.m. midnight and 2. A dragon appears in the valley, its horns light up blue, as soon as you see the horns light up blue, fly over, shoot them with an arrow, and that will reveal your next shrine. If you need to wait, there's conveniently a campfire right next to the Rito on that ledge. You can wait till nighttime. This shrine is aimed for stillness, it's pretty straightforward. Just float on all the fans and use bombs to break every single wall of blocks that you come across. It's pretty simple, that's pretty much all there is to the shrine. This is the most complicated part, this gear. You want to use stasis when the draft is lined up with the next bomb wall, then use the draft to fly over, stay in the fans, and get your next emblem. On to Daruk. Daruks are a little bit tricky, specifically one of them. It is this picture right here. It is very hard to find. It doesn't make any sense. I'm going to show you where it is. Come over down here, right down here where it says Darb Pond. This little bump, that's where you want your pin. That is exactly where you need to go. Just take my word for it. I searched forever for that one. This one, the key is the crab rock on the left. Come up top, you'll see the Isle of Rabak. It looks like a crab. Come over to where the text says Lake Darmani. Place your pin right there, and that is that picture. And the final one is very easy. It's by Rudania. You don't even really need to pin it, but for sake, there it is. Okay, the one that was hard at Darb Pond or whatever this is. These Gorons are telling you you need to stand in lava in that ring. If you use Magnesis, you can see metal blocks over there. You want to fly over to them. Take the metal blocks and you can push around the rocks. Basically, you're building a stepping stone path to the ring. Just be careful, watch your footing. Step on the edge of the ring. You don't even need to be in the center and that will reveal the Block the Blaze Shrine. If you have your upgraded Flamebreaker armor, you can just run through this whole shrine. But this is how you solve the beginning portions. Use the block to defend yourself from the flames. This section, if you don't have the armor, basically what you want to do is use these two metal blocks to stack them. And you should be able to prevent, give yourself a little bit of a gap, prevent the flames from getting you. And if you want the treasure, there's a stone smasher over here. Use the two blocks to create a path. And go ahead and grab yourself a stone smasher, which is going to come in handy for one of the next trials coming up. The final puzzle of this shrine is motion control. I don't know how to solve it legitimately. It probably involves the two blocks. Just get fireproof elixirs or upgrade your armor and be done with it. Warp to Rudania, press ZL to adjust your aim, and you will immediately see the rings you have to fly through for the next trial. It's not too challenging. There is a time limit, but it's very forgiving. So just enjoy how cool the lava looks. When you get through the last one, this will reveal your next shrine. This is the Shero Lun Shrine, which is blind spots. Pretty straightforward, it's like a ski lift, which is kind of interesting. The first section, just dodge all the flames, jump onto the next set of blocks, and as soon as you pass through those spikes, get on top. There's going to be three guardians you want to take out. Next section, you need Cryonis. There's a treasure chest. If you want it, use Cryonis and Magnesis to grab it. Then basically just jump over the flames to the last waterfall, Cryonis again, to the end. For Daruk's final challenge, go ahead and warp back to Rudania. You're going to have to go around the whole top of Death Mountain because Rudania is in the way. But in the lava down at Darmani Lake, you will see an Igneo Talus, but it's not an ordinary Igneo Talus. So get your camera if you care about your Hyrule Compendium because this is an Igneo Talus Titan. It's not any kind of more difficult to take out. If you have fireproof elixirs or your upgraded armor, you could easily stand on top of them. But there is a constant updraft so you can use your slow motion and just even regular arrows and a good bow and he'll be done in no time. The shrine is moving targets. It uses the cannon mechanic of the Goron story in the main game. For the second target, wait for it to start to descend from its top position, hit the switch and go ahead and launch your ball out of there. 
The next section is motion controls. Yay, everybody's favorite. For the first target, you're going to want to flip the target down so it slides down the little railing it's attached to, something like what you see on your screen. This reveals a more complicated second target. You're going to hold the controller upside down in your hand. Good luck pressing B to cancel, and it should look something like this and launch it when it's lined up, and hopefully it works out. <laughs> on to Mifa. One of her pictures involves the Tingle Island set of islands, Tingle and his brothers, however you want to refer to it as. On the map, they're very easy to spot. Go ahead and zoom in. This one is on the cliff directly across from Knuckle Island, so go ahead and place your pin there. Her next picture is on one of the cliffs of Zoro's domain. It's pretty easy to spot because it has a very unique geography on the top, so go ahead, even if you can't find it, scan the mountaintops and you should see it in Upland Zorana. That's where you want your pin. And the final one is pretty easy to spot. It's just off to the right of Zora's Domain at the base of the waterfall at Maiku Lake from Majora's Mask. So go, that's the easiest one. Go ahead to Maiku Lake, get your uh, Zora armor and swim up the rings. Same as all the other ring puzzles. At the top, you will find a shrine that is Secret Stairway. First thing you want to do with this one is build yourself a Cryona staircase and get onto this platform where you will find a metallic block. Go ahead and grab it and just drop it down. At the bottom, you want Cryonis, and at the corners of each of the longer metallic blocks, raise them up, grab the block with Magnesis, put it on top of your Cryonis block, create a new Cryonis block on the waterfall to hold the bigger block, then repeat it with the other side using Magnesis and the smaller block once again. At this point, you want to get as much height as possible, so use Magnesis to grab the smaller block again and wedge it in between the two bigger metallic blocks, and you should be able to climb up and reach the end. If you want the chest, just do it the opposite way. For the one at Upland Zorana, you're going to have to take down ancient foes as Cass's song implies, and this refers to guardians. You'll see some Zoras, there's a turret guardian, use your parrying skills to take that one out, and then rely on ancient arrows to take down the guardian sky watchers. Once all of them are defeated, this will reveal a shrine called Support and Guidance, which is very similar to one of the early shrines in the regular game. You're going to need to use Cryonis to guide this ball over into the cage down at the bottom right. So place a block right down there where you just saw me do it. And then the first one, you're going to want to place it just so that the very corner gets tapped by the orb. Doing so should do that. Enable the ball to get launched over to the right. Go onto your second Cryonis block into the cage where it will get propelled up and land in its little nesting spot. For the final one, make your way over to Tingle Island. However you want to do it, you're going to have to battle the rain. You will find Muzu who will tell you to follow the morning light. There's conveniently a campfire. Wait until morning at the campfire. Once morning hits, follow the sunlight that reflects on the water and you should see another one of those famous rings down there in the water. Go ahead and float on down through it, swim inside, and it will reveal a shrine out in the middle of the ocean. This is the melting point. This shrine is a little bit complicated. Be wary of your flame weapons. These blocks in the beginning you can either melt or you can use stasis and knock them out of the way. Go over to either the left or the right and step on the switch to get two blocks to fall down. Stand on the top of the ramp and shoot some of the blocks with fire arrows to melt them. The ones that fell down, you want to stand next to them with a flame weapon or melt them slightly so you can stand on top of them. Use one of the smallest blocks that you've melted as a stepping stool to climb up and get onto the central walkway. This will enable you to get to the exit, but you can't exactly get up there. You need a lot of height. So go back over to the block that's sitting on the top and knock it over. You can use the torches or your own fire arrows or weapons to melt it. Once it's small enough to get over towards the exit, use Cryonis to jump on top of it. You can either damage boost or jump onto the block and then onto the ledge up top. There might be another way to solve this as well. This is just how I did it. On to Urbosa. This very phallic one is simply the Yiga clan hideout. You need to approach it from the back at Kotakar Shrine. Her next picture is pretty easy. It is right outside of Gerudo Town, near the ruins that lead to the Ice House. In between both of them, off to the left, is where you want to place your pin. 
Urbosa's final picture is also very easy to spot. It is down by the South LeMay Labyrinth, off to the left, in the area called the East Barrens. Go ahead, anywhere over in that area, place your pin. Over in the East Barrens that we just pinned, you're going to find a Mulduga swimming around, but it's not just any ordinary Mulduga, just like the Igneo Talus Titan. This is the Muldu King. So if you care about your compendium, get a picture because this is a new enemy. This thing has very strong defense. Even their fully powered Master Sword barely does any damage. So rely on Urbosa's Fury since this is Urbosa's challenge after all. Defeating the monster will, of course, unlock your shrine, Kiev Tala, big or small. This one is an electric puzzle, the theme of the Gerudo region. Use the small block to get the chain started. Get your next small block, hold it by the switch just enough to raise the platform, stop and put it on top of the platform to continue the electric path. Use the ball and chain to wrap over the first thing to continue the chain. Now you need something tall. Turn around, grab the small block, but you'll notice it's not tall enough. Instead, Use Cryonis to make it tall enough and put it on top, and that's the shrine. The rest of it is motion controls that just leads to pointless treasure. Yay. Yay. Anyway, on to the next one. This is the one that was right in between Gerudo Town and the runes leading to the Ice House. Go ahead and just walk over there. You'll come across some seals. Use your Sheikah armor to sneak up on them, and you will soon see rings, just like all the other ones. The shrine going through the rings is called dual purpose. First thing you want to do is get over to the other side, then connect the metal paths to open your way to the next room. Use your rubber armor or the thunder helm to stand on top of the blocks without getting hurt. Line them up to get to the next section. On the middle track, the block towards the right, bring it over just enough so that it's still being electrocuted. Then on the top right block, move that over next to continue the chain. Go back to the middle track and the one on the left, bring that over and that should complete the train. If you want the treasure, move the bottom leftmost block and complete the chain. It should give you a treasure chest, but to get up there, you gotta break it, climb on that grating, and then reconnect it to get your emblem. Okay, for the next one, work to cut to Car Shrine and work your way to the backside of the Yiga Clan hideout. There you will find two non-Yiga people who are telling you they have a sacred orb in there that they're planning on throwing into the big gap Master Koga fell down. Use your banana tactics again and sneak your way around. Work your way to DK's banana horde, grab your orb, come back to the window, use stasis, and launch the crap out of it all the way over to the door, fly over. If you get spotted, it doesn't really matter. You're just running away with the orb, throwing it down the hole. You'll hear some chimes and the Zelda theme thing, and there's your shrine. This is inside the box. It's motion controls, but it's not so bad for once. You just look inside the window and count how many of each color there are, and then you come back and put them in their respective spots. For the next part, flip the thing upside down, open the cage with Magnesis. This'll dump out the blocks. Use Magnesis to grab one of the non-colored ones Put it in the third spot to reveal a treasure chest that has a thunder spear in it. Go ahead and collect your emblem. The final part of the Champion's Ballad quest is a final Divine Beast dungeon. Go ahead and run straight ahead to the Guidance Stone to get your map so that you can actually start the dungeon. Then work your way back towards the entrance where you'll see these gears. Go ahead and start rotating it so that the color of everything is orange. Jump on this first gear, ignore the second one for now, and just ride this one all the way over to the next side where you should see a doorway circling around. Go ahead and jump in there. Now you'll find this cylindrical shaft. You're gonna want to be rotating it clockwise so you can actually get across and avoid the spikes. Past the flames, you're gonna find an orb that you can dump by stepping on the switch. You want it to dump in the chute on the right-hand side and let it spiral down. Once it gets caught in the first U-bend, you're gonna want to switch the rotation, turn everything blue. Watch the ball, it's gonna get caught in a second U-bend. Switch the rotation once again. This will allow the ball to dump out onto the platform. Take it back, drop it down this ramp. Go over there and once the orb lands in its little resting place, you get your first terminal. Next, back in the main chamber, land on the first gear again. This time jump to the second one to work your way to the top. Book a left once you get on top of the shaft. Once over there, fly down and you will see 
a metallic thing, you need to get magnesis and shove into the wall. This will get that rotating. You're probably going to have to rotate it back just to get through the doorway faster. In this room, you want it to be rotating as you see it now, and you want it to climb, push you up the right hand side. Once up on the right hand side, look up at the ceiling. You'll see a metallic piece you can pull down. Go ahead and use Magnesis, just drop it for now, and jump back down there. Grab Magnesis, lock it into place in this mechanical structure, then go ahead and look up at the ceiling. You should see that next piece coming around. Use Magnesis, pull it forward to push the remaining portion of the room around. Go ahead and climb into this doorway and get your second terminal. Back in the main chamber, there's going to be a horde of guardians messing around with you. Go ahead and take them out. It's not too much trouble. This time, get back on the gear, but make a right on the shaft instead, and turn right to come towards this side first. Towards the end, you'll see a few metallic things, one of which is a treasure chest. If you bring it over, you will find five bomb arrows. Pretty nice. Next, for this puzzle, you'll see a metallic structure similar to the one we already messed with, and right above you, there's another metallic thing. Grab the one that's on the lower thing, pull it out of where it is, bring it up, shove it in the next opening on the right. Now, for that other structure, grab that with magnesis and pull it over. You're gonna have to wait till it's lined up perfectly the way it's rotating. Once it latches completely on, it starts to rotate the gears. You'll see the door coming around. Go ahead and jump in there. Once inside, you'll see a giant fan room. Go ahead and run all the way down to the ladder. Now, rotate it so that everything is turning blue. This will reverse the fan, allowing you to paraglide over to the next ladder, climb up top. And of course, now we're gonna paraglide back over that way, so we have to switch the rotation. Land on the platform. Now you need stasis, so go ahead and grab that. Aim at the fan. Wait for the platform to get over to the right a little more because that is where your next guidance stone is or terminal, whatever you want to call it. That is number three. Back in the main chamber, climb on up the ladder and head over to the other side. Get stasis and you'll see these little stone structures that if you watch them, they slide down, but there's a cog right there. So we want to freeze one of them before it slides down so it latches onto that cog. Doing so will raise this platform on the right hand side. Avoid the Sky Watcher guarding if you can and jump in here. In this room you're going to use Cryonis to push up that whatever it is, piston. Rotate it so that you want to come up to the left hand side where the doorway is. Continue on to the next puzzle. In this room you'll find a fan blade. Use stasis on the bolt at the bottom and then break the stasis to rotate this giant wheel. Similar to a hose it drains all the water. Go ahead and jump down, run over, stand on the switch, and you'll see a me metallic ball. Go ahead and grab it with magnesis, step off of the switch, place the ball in front of this piston, and then jump back on there. The ball will launch, hit that gear again, raising the water, allowing you to use Cryonis and reach the final terminal that unlocks the main door in the first chamber. And for the final thing that remains, back in the main chamber, Use Magnesis on this giant wheel by the main door, shove it over, you're gonna have to climb on top of the thing. When the thing is lined up, use Magnesis and shove it into the door. This will get the gears rotating and open it up, leading into the final boss. Go ahead and defeat him, and you will be rewarded the Master Cycle Zero, and that is the entirety of the main quest in the Champion's Ballad DLC. I hope it helped you guys out. If you want to see a more casual Let's Play of the entire quest, Check out the playlist on my channel. I'll probably link it in the description and put it at the end of this video on screen. Uh, and feel free to check out some of the other content on my channel. I do long plays without commentary. Every now and then I'll do a franchise discussion topic or something similar, just one-off things, and occasionally a commentated Let's Play, among other things, Nintendo and other gaming companies as well. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.